Today we're gonna to talk about ProRes RAW and the workflow on Final Cut Pro to make an image that shot five stops over go from this to this. Stay tuned. Flash Film Media presents Quick Tip of the Week. What's going on guys? I just wanna give you guys a quick workflow idea when working with ProRes RAW to my knowledge and some of the things I really like about it when using it in Final Cut Pro. Let's talk about one quick thing. Um, and let's start from the, from the beginning. I went out today and I shot some video you know, at the park. It is super overexposed and I, and I graded it to the left um, or to the right, I'm sorry, in order to get a really, really clean image um which you don't always have to do with this you know shooting in this type of um in broad daylight you don't have to do it it helps when you're you have less light to work with and you want to get your shadows really clean but what's great about the combination of fs5 um prores raw and the atomist recorder is with the atomist recorder you can view how good your image will look even though you are um, exposing to the right. Even though you're really overexposed, um, Atomist has the great feature which allows you to, um, it allows you to, you know, view your image or how it would look once you correct it in post. Like, look at this shot here. That shot looks terrible. It looks unusable. And if somebody brought this to you, you'd be like, what in the world is this? So we're gonna start with a few things. Let's drag this clip and let's throw it down to the timeline. Now, I personally, this is just my personal, I like to color correct and grade mine almost from scratch. They offer um, raw to log conversion here and camera LUT. If you go none, you're gonna get a really bad picture on both. So I usually leave in um, the S log uh, to S gamma, S center gamma, um, raw to log conversion and i like my profile flat like this and i like to grade from here now you can see it already made a huge difference compared to what we had when it was for some reason when it drops in it just doesn't do a great job um and it's probably because i'm overexposed and it's not prepared for that so i like i said i like this at none um and i usually start from there now, from here, if you're familiar with scopes, you know that anything over 100 um, is overexposed. We are we are grading this for a for Rec 709. Um, so to make sure you're grading in Rec 709, you want to click on your actual uh, timeline, go to modify. Right now we're in wide gamma 2020. You want to move that to Rec 709 and hit OK. If you have an HDR display um, or or you know then you can do it that way. I'm using a Mac 5K and I'm going to just grade it here. Plus it makes it simple. Um, and looking at scopes, I know when I pull up my color wheels, I know looking at my chart where I want, you know, where I want my color to lie. So my shadows, and we're going to do just a simple color correction. I want my shadows to be as close or, you know, as close to zero as possible. My highlights to be up close to 100 without going over which that's overexposed um and that's not oh close and then i like you play with your mid-tones to however you like them wherever you're comfortable um i like my mid-tones to be down a little bit and then you can go and add a little you can add your saturation back in a little bit here um and that's about a decent image really quick Oh, let's kill that audio because we don't need it and that's just my workflow for working with ProRes RAW now let, let me show you this one shot here because this shot looks bad um, and like I said the, the benefit of doing that and exposing to the right is just to get a cleaner image um, get a cleaner image out of your your FS5 that's a clean busy image a lot of colors a lot of reds a lot of oranges a lot of greens but like this shot here um, which looks really bad because it's shot uh, in ProRes RAW you have a lot 
to work with. So let's see what we can do with this shot. Let's go to our color wheels. Let's pull them highlights way down. Look at this, look how much we can bring back in that. That's crazy. <laughs> that is a usable shot again. And what's like what's dope is when you use the Atomist recorder, um, it shows you this shot. So it tells it's, you can tell you're not clipping, um, even though on the screen on the FS5, it'll look blue out. So let's raise my midtones a little bit. And I don't mind the clipping here a little bit because that's the white from the water. It, it you know, even though I have the ability to properly expose that and get that white, I mean, I guess we could. It didn't even, it didn't really matter that much to me because it's pure white anyway. Um, now, you can always go lower than what this is. I don't even know why the wheel doesn't go down, but see how it's done over here? It's over here, it's just done as far as it can go. If you hold it and drag, you can go further to get that closer to zero. We're gonna increase our saturation a little bit, just a tad. And bam look at that a shot that was unusable um, just that quick is now usable look at that difference that's what that's the benefit of ProRes raw plus I like to tweak my temperatures a little bit um, let's make a little bit of a warmer day bam that's a beautiful shot there to a certain extent now what's great is if I shoot all of these in the same setting during the same light, I could really copy and paste um, my color settings over to the to you know to the next shot. So here we got a bird jumping in a tree. Let's kill that audio. And let's just copy and paste it. Let's look at the before. Well, first, let's do one thing. Let's go to the inspector. Let's remove the camera LUT to none. Because if you paste it, it doesn't automatically do that. Yep, paste it. And for this one, it doesn't work because I didn't expose, overexpose it as much. And you can see our colors are down here. They're super low. So let's go back to our color tab and let's... Our shadows are fine. Uh, our highlights are too low. They should be about... And you see I'm still going up past it. I like mine for Rec 709 to be under 100. Should be about here. Um, Midtones are really high, which I, I like my midtones there. It's too, Listen, the thing about color grading is it's your taste. It's what you feel. Now, color correction, you don't want skin tones looking terrible. You don't want... I see a lot of people with just really bad... Um, really bad white balance, man. That's, to me, white balance... Is the first thing that screams amateur like when I see a video and it's not properly white balance I instantly know their skill level when it comes to video because it's just it's, it's terrible the white balance is usually like really orange like that and it shouldn't be it should be like I want a little bit of a warm tone so I'm about here the camera thinks it should be here but I want it about here now the tent this has a lot of green in it and this is just color correction. This is not really color grading. This is correction. Um, let's just see how that, that shot looks. Boom, now we got another shot that I shot, which is, um, look at the green on that one. Now the Rec 709 is not gonna provide as much color space uh, as, as uh, Gamma 20, but you get an idea. Um, this is a shot I wanna make sure I show you guys of a family fishing. And what's great about this shot is we, we're gonna run through it and do the same thing, inspector. Now, now mind you, if you wanna start, if you didn't overexpose it, you could start from here. I can still go in and I can tweak it from here and still get a great image. Look at that, I can still get a great image. Um, let's bring that down here. Let's bring them here, uh, about here. Now, look, look at how great that image is. Um, let me close this for a second and I'm gonna post at the end of this video I'm gonna show you all of these clips look at how great that image is give me the color wheels and look at look at how much detail we have in the shadows and still we're able to actually this is a little overexposed let me bring it down a little bit boom look at that increase my mid tones a little bit lower my highlights look at look at how we still got all this shadow detail 
we still can see them, their faces and everything. And we still have this bright, this piece of grass here was super bright. It was crazy bright. And then we can warm it up a little bit, make it seem like more of a, you know, more of a um, closer to golden hour. Really, this was like 12 p.m., so it was super hot. This was one of my favorite shots just because of the dynamic range needed to capture this bright um, grass and then at the trees. So if you look at, let me see a few things. Go back here and let's just, that's what the original shot looked like. This grass was very bright. I can't express to you how bright it was and I was able to capture it. Um, so let me show you a few more shots. This guy pushing the stroller. We're gonna go straight into color grading it, or color correcting it. Now this is not color grading. Let me explain the difference. Color grading is me adding a special look to this. I'm just correcting the color. You can consider this color grading if this is the look I wanted, um, but I am just trying to correct the color. That is a beautiful shot. I mean, look at the detail in the trees and I'm not doing nothing else to it. I haven't added sharpness or added anything to this i'm just trying to give you guys an example of the flexibility of prores raw compared to the mpeg with mpeg you would not have been able to overexpose it to this extent and still capture all of the dynamic range that we're able to capture and pull back um like this shot here i mean look at that that is amazing that is amazing so let's, let's get this close to here, our blacks, as close to true black as we want, um, without overexposing that. And look, I mean, look at that. That is, look at the detail in the bricks. That is amazing. We can actually bring it down a little more to get everything under the Rec 709, um, 100, 100 Lumas and still get a beautiful shot. Let's add a little saturation to it to bring out that green grass, just a little bit, and then bam, you got a, you got a perfect shot. Um, one thing, like I said, I like to do is, I like to personally, look at that. Look at the water, just the detail in the water and the, everything flying and floating in the air. I personally like to just add a little warm to it, boom. And that's great. What other shots do we have? Like, look at it. Look how bright this is. Let's add this to it. Kill the noise. Let's go mess with the colors on this one. Um, and you can sometimes I use the the uh, color bars. Sometimes I like the color wheels because I know I'm gonna change the temperature. Um, I hate when it, when a uh, Final Cut Pro does that. It's a glitch where you start to edit something and it jumps ahead. Okay, let's pull these colors down. It's just amazing to see, like, wow. And some people say your blacks need to live on, you know, live on zero. And, and to a certain extent, they do. For true, true black is due. But the thing, like, the thing has been um, that faded look that you'll see on a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, Instagram photos and videos. This with this LUT, the, the, the saturation is already popping, but look at how we're able to capture just the brightest area, you know, the sidewalk, just the different shades of this grass. However, we're still able to get great detail out of, you know, the shadow areas. That's the benefit of a raw image. That That's what makes the reds, the black magics, look good you ever see some stuff you like man their camera is just you know they're able to see everything and i can point my camera at something and the darks is too dark the brights are too bright that is why they're shooting in raw often or they're shooting in prores hq where they have some flexibility maybe about um three stop they can shoot about three stops of dynamic range over and tweak it and play with it where this i'm shooting like five to six stops over i mean look at that look at that shot was this shot longer maybe not okay look i mean just look at that look at that shot i don't know what this duck was doing 
but there's the same shot and one thing we can do is because this is similar i can copy that boom bang pow paste it we're good to go and look it just it transfers right over i'd make this a little bit lighter because i you know that's just to my taste i don't want to i don't want to overdo it but this is just amazing look at look at the look at how good the tree looks um compared to everything like that's amazing all right let's do a few more quick this is a shot i really wanted to show you guys here because it's so it's such a bright shot and you would miss this shot with you would you would not be able to get everything shooting your traditional style or shooting with a camera that doesn't have you know um, a great kodak and a gr and great dynamic range so i'm just using the color bars here we're just gonna bring it down i mean look at look at look at how much look at that detail like that's amazing let's bring that here let's bring this up a little bit look at that so the sky is as you can see it's just a it's a really blue day it's not really bright just a few clouds but look at the dynamic range in capturing the white poles as well as the dark areas that is amazing you can add a pinch of saturation um some would say they want a little bit more you want to lower your highlights and raise your mint tones a little bit more you know it's up to you how you like it again i like to use the color wheel because i like to add just a tinge of just a tinge of temperature to it but that's me now there's different things you can do i mean you can do all kind of things you can get into curves um and you can find ways to you know bring out your sky a little more it's up to you and how you want to do it but um this shot here is another great shot that let's kill the audio this is another example of how you can just pull a clean clean look at that sit my blacks down a little bit i mean that um the top of this um roof here is reflecting a lot of light we're able to still get our darks and get details and it's just nice smidge of the saturation that's just my doing and i should have did it with the wheels because i'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of temperature i mean and it's just it's a quick fast workflow um i don't know if you've ever worked with raw files before but you can get look just great clean images that's probably my favorite one because that was one i was worried about the most just out at the park and i just wanted to show you guys the workflow working with prores raw and how easy it is let's do this shot right here that's a really tough shot real quick just how easy it is to work with with final cut pro and you know don't get me wrong listen you can still achieve I want to say 65, maybe 70% of this with using ProRes. Um, oh, thanks a lot. Using um, ProRes, you can still achieve 75% of this, or I'm say 60. You can still achieve 60% of this um, using ProRes HQ, just not to this extent. Maybe three stops of dynamic range. I think I'm shooting like five stops over and I mean look at that look look how we're able to pull that back Let's get this closer to about here is where I want it This is a great example um, of The benefits of using of, of using raw how you can have the dark areas here along with the white areas of the reflection of the Sun and it's not overexposed some would say they want to up oh, a saturation. Some would say they want to sit that exposure right at zero, and we got some of our points down here. We could do it here, but I don't need to be that dark. And then you want to raise that to about 100, and that's our proper exposure. And that's a really hard shot to get with a regular camera. 
I mean, these are, if you have an FS5, you're not taking advantage of this. You're not getting the full benefit of your camera. Um, and I'm just happy that Sony uh, gave us the ability to, you know, unlock this because there's, come on now, if, if, if Canon gave you the ability to unlock this with uh, a C1, a C100, the camera would still be super relevant. last one real quick exposure let's yank it down get it under at 100 get that close to zero or as dark as we'd like it normally sitting around zero like that raise those highlights boom bang um, and then this is you can play with it as you want as long as you bring your highlights back under 100 and like I said I am exposing for rec 709 And my Alexa is in the background talking. Let's go to wheels. Let's add a little bit of temperature. This is just my personal doing. Um, and another great thing about Perez Raw is it's ready to go. Look at that. Uh, a lot of this was shot in 4K 60. And I'm shooting this on the computer. They got a whole lot of other stuff going including this screen capture, which takes a lot of processing. I'm using a 2015 iMac 5K here. And it's running like, like butter. So that's the workflow. I'll post this video at the end of this video so you can see it um, in 4K. And that's that, guys. All right, guys, I'm gonna ask you to do what I ask you to do every week. Like, share, and subscribe. See you next video, guys.
more daily updates, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. 